Well, hello and welcome to this video. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Matt Petrowski and I've been teaching about FileMaker for a long time. I love doing it and in this video, what you can hope to learn is some more about using guides within layout mode. Stick with me, we'll be on my desktop in just a few. All right, so what do we have for today? We have got guides on the books for today's lesson. Now, before we get started, uh, just a few things to mention. If you've never seen one of my videos before or if this is uh, the result of a YouTube search, what have you, you are going to be able to find all of the different videos in series if you wanna go all the way back to number one or if you wanna take a look at some of the other series that I've created. There's three of them, three others. This is number four. Um, click on the channel icon down below and that will take you to the channel here on YouTube and you'll be able to see my other series. Of course, I create tons of videos over at FileMakerMagazine.com for all the people who are subscribers there. More in-depth and uh, extra bonus files, all kinds of different new and unique techniques. Of course, here on this video, as I zoom in here, we are going to be taking a look at a file that we've been working on. And for most of these videos, this file that we have on screen, you can access in the description below. Just click on the show more and it should reveal a link where you will be able to directly download, directly download this uh, FileMaker file and be able to work along. I'm working in file a copy of FileMaker 16 and uh, let's take a look at our topic. So we are taking a look at guides. This is a pretty simple uh, aspect of FileMaker's layout mode. As I go into layout mode on this file, this is really helpful in terms of being able to keep consistent alignment of all of your objects across multiple layouts, but you can also use guides within the one layout that you're working on. Now, as I zoom in here, this ruler may not be showing on your copy of FileMaker, and I've shown this in other uh, videos as well. If we go to the view menu, this section right here, starting with page margins and going down to dynamic guides, pretty much deals with all of our layout tools specific to guides and alignment and the grid. We can see we've got the grid, we've got the guides. Of course, we had a dedicated video where we talked about the grid specifically. You'll have to go reference that. That is within this series probably four or five videos ago. Um, guides we didn't directly talk about, but as I'm selecting right here, we can see that we have the show guides and the snap to guides. Now this, learning this keyboard shortcut for me is really pretty helpful, this command option uh, semicolon. Being able to turn those guides off and on when you're looking at data on screen is pretty helpful. Snap to guides, I typically have never or rarely ever turned this off mostly because anytime that you want to ignore something in FileMaker, well not something, when you want to ignore either the grid or guides, when you're dragging something within FileMaker, you can use a modifier key. So as I drag this, I've shown this before, we can see that the object itself is popping and each time it's popping, it's because it's snapping to the grid. If I hold down the command key, or on Windows, it may be the control key or, or shift key, the object will then float freely. So we can always bypass either the grid or the guides by just holding down a modifier key. So that's why I mentioned that I have rarely used the option to turn off the snap to guides, and most of the time I leave the um, snap to grid on as well. Um, when you're aligning objects within FileMaker, when we are under the Arrange menu and we are using these Align options, when we have two different, two or more objects selected in the Inspector palette, the alignment will also ignore the grid and ignore the guides. So when we're aligning and we use relative objects, we're not worried about that as well. The rulers is what you will need to turn on if you want to drag out guides and be able to use them. So if your rulers are not showing on your layout, then you will want to use that option. And that uh, is a shortcut right there that you could use. Once those rulers are on, I tend to leave them on. One thing that happens is when you're in FileMaker's layout mode, certain settings that you turn on will persist for that layout as you move from uh, layout to layout. The ruler stays on for all of them. 
Now, I've already mentioned it before, but this is one of a few ways where you can change the measurement system. If I click here, it'll switch between uh, inches, centimeters, and points. Points we use for our design user interface. I've mentioned that in the past. Um, of course, when our rulers are here, notice the little bar. This is oftentimes very helpful when you're wanting to align something. Um, I find it useful when I'm setting tabs within objects. If I go into, here's some text right here. If I, if I double click within this, um, I can set a tab at any point in time. This ruler has converted and it's now more like a text processing document where I can click to set tabs within the ruler. So not specifically relevant to guides. If you want to get rid of those tabs, notice that I just selected and dragged. And when I drag beyond, I'm, my mouse is right now hovering within the white area when in the ruler area and I am able to reposition this tab wherever I want. I can also double click on this to bring up the tabs dialog in order to change it from either a uh, left to a right, a center on, to be able to set a fill character, to set a precise position, what have you. But if I want to get rid of that with it selected, I can simply drag the line, you can see the line right there going across. If I drag down, you see that line disappear? That's because I've dragged the cursor, even though you can't see my cursor on screen right now, beyond the area of the, the where the ruler is, and of course it goes away. So that's how we get rid of tabs within that. Again, not specific to guides, but hey, I guess I'm figuring I'm here in the section talking about grid guides, etc. Now, dynamic guides, that's the thing that when you that is turned on, when you have this selected, what it's going to do is if you have more than two objects, in other words, if I move, if I select this object and I move it and it is a certain distance away from this object, and then I have another object that's relative to this object, it tries to tell me the equal amounts of space. You always see the dynamic guides when you're moving objects. We can see right now the line, that line came on that right there that went on screen. That's telling me that I'm directly centered within this area. And when I move this over, I'm using the arrow keys and I hit and I get that direct center. That means I'm directly centered over this object. So that is what the dynamic guides are controlling. I've never turned those off from the time that FileMaker added them. I think in FileMaker 13 or 14, they are just super helpful, but they really don't get in the way. So now let's talk about the ultimate item that I've been trying, that I'm getting to, which is the guides themselves. So we've talked about the ruler and everything in this area. Guides are really easy. You just drag them out of the ruler and you can do that either horizontally or vertically. But one thing that some developers don't know about, or FileMaker learners, I should say, is the fact that any of these guides, when they are blue, they only show up for the current layout. And of course, remember that shortcut key of the option semicolon. It's really nice to be able to hide them, work on your user interface, and then bring them back when you want to align something. So let's say this particular position um, accounts for a place where I want to have something. So we can see all of the dynamic guides that are popping as they're on the screen, showing me all of the different relative settings, blue lines all over the place. Because I've got snap to uh, the grid on, this is the one shortcoming of guides, is the grid will overtake guides. So you can see right there that this button, as it's popping, it's popping against the grid and it's bypassing my guide right here. So that's the one thing that we do have to do when we are using our grid for alignment, we have to turn off the snap to our guides. We have to turn off our snap to grid if the guide itself is not giving us what we want. And of course I'm, I'm hitting a couple of issues here. It so happens that this vertical uh, or horizontal guide that I put right here with the dynamic guides on as well, we can see that this object, FileMaker is attempting to snap the bottom of this object to the top of this object. So I probably have to go turn off dynamic guides in order to get this to, there we go, to finally pay attention to the grid or my guides. So that is something to be aware of. If you have the grid on, dynamic guides, and you're reducing your regular guides and the grid, the guides that you are using aren't following your grid, then you're going to probably have to turn those off. I, I honestly myself have not learned and uh, memorized all of these because as I mentioned, most of the time when I'm designing, I am designing according to the grid. So when I view my grid, 
this guide is not a guide that I would be using. The guide would actually be on a grid line, so I wouldn't be worried. I would be following the grid itself, just as a point of interest. Now, there's some settings on these guides that you can use. Let's turn off the grid again. These guides can be really handy because you can use them across multiple layouts and you can lock them. All you have to do is right click on the Glock guide and if I can hit the guide, nope, are you gonna hit it? That is not the right right click and that moved right there. Points it, why? It's probably because I'm zoomed out here. There we go. Don't know what was going on. Um, probably because my, my zoom, I was getting uh, the right click is not interpreting the right location of my click relative to showing me the icons, etc. When I zoomed out and then I'm clicking on the guide now, this is what you should get as a menu. Share guide with all layouts. Now that's really useful because that will convert the guide to pink. Then we can also lock the guide, and of course we can remove the guide, but I've already shown you that if you want to remove the guide, you can simply just drag it into the sidebar. But if we have locked the guide, which makes a guide go black, or gray in this case, um, that's the one thing I, I'm not too fond of. I would prefer the, the guide be locked, and I just wouldn't be able to move it instead of FileMaker changing the color because it's really nice to see when a guide is shared across all layouts in that it's pink versus blue. But we can see right now, even though I've clicked on this and I've made it to be shared with all layouts, as soon as I lock the guide, that takes over the color. So I could have a locked local guide or a locked uh, global guide and not know the difference between them, not know which one is which. As soon as I unlock the guide, you can see that it now goes pink. So I tend to find that a little bit of a shortcoming in the guides, the fact that we aren't able to distinguish once we lock a guide what it is, local or uh, global in nature. But of course, once you set a guide, you pretty much know what that guide is there for. And of course, even with it locked, I believe you are able to remove that guide. It will forcibly get rid of everything, whereas if it was locked, you would not be able to get rid of that. Now, I just got rid of that, and I've never tried this, but I don't know that it'll work. I'll do a Command-Z, uh, and it does. Uh, 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 the undo applies to guide actions as well. I was thinking it might just apply to layout objects, but I've never had to do a Command-Z or an undo on a guide. But Of course, I could unlock that and then just drag it into the bar if I want to get rid of it. And that is... Uh, for the most part, that's guides. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we can take this guide, and let's see if I can lock it. I'll share it with all layouts, and then just to prove the point, we'll go over to, let's say, for example, the theme layout, and there it is, right there. Speaking of themes, let's take a quick break and take a look at this. This video has been brought to you by FileMakerThemes.com. It's a one-stop shop for choosing a theme to apply to your new or existing FileMaker solution. When considering your next move toward advancing the look and feel of your FileMaker solution, don't forget to visit FileMakerThemes.com. All right, thanks so much for uh, taking a quick peek at that. If you need a guide uh, or a theme, that is a great place to go get a FileMaker theme. So I'll just remove that guide, and I think that's going to give us our topic of guides here. Not a whole lot to cover beyond that when it comes to user guides, so this will be a a uh, nice short and sweet video with regards to those guides, although I will get to questions. Today is Friday for me. So at this point in time, if you drop off the video, it's because we're finished with the actual topic here. Nice, sweet 15 minutes. We'll go see if we have any questions. I'll switch over and open those up really quickly here. Yep, they're on screen. Good deal. All right. Bonjour. I recommend... Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Candido for the recommendation. Yes, if you're interested in learning about FileMaker. I've got a really good topic coming up where I show how to create a PDF client side using a JavaScript library where you can create any portion of a web viewer, just one little area, let's say it's got a barcode or any little section, and convert that into a PDF and get it into a FileMaker container. And you can do that client side without using FileMaker's built-in uh, PDF rendering. So it's just yet another way to do something quick if you're using a web viewer in order to display data. And uh, hey, David. All right. Well, it looks like we don't have any questions specifically about guides. I 
wouldn't think that we would. It's pretty easy. But if anybody in the chat has any questions that you want to ask about anything about FileMaker, we can do that. I can address a few of them. We can see if any come in in the short time that we have here. Otherwise, I will wrap this video up because those watching this as a replay aren't always interested in uh, me gibber gabbering on the screen unless we're showing something cool about FileMaker. All right, so I think no questions. That's going to give us a wrap for today. I'm going to switch over here and um, I am going to bring in my music. All right, uh, next video or subscribe, that's the one that's right here. And of course, you can check out the FileMaker Magazine uh, up above, link filemakermagazine.com, really easy. Um, next video in this series, as we're walking through this file, you are going to find that right here. And until next time, much luck to you and happy file making. All right, bye-bye.